Saturday Social, brought to you by EA Sports FC with PlayStation 5. The Euros is getting ever closer. I'm getting mm. very excited. Uh, last international break, of course, this weekend. Uh, and the squads are announced soon, aren't they? There have been a few, obviously, these recent squads, there have been a few sort of young players breaking yep. in, the Kobe Mainu, uh, for example. So we thought we'd get the whiteboard out and do something a bit different today. Yeah, today we are going to be tapping into Statman Dave's football IQ. Mm. So we've asked him to produce. <laughs> no pressure, mate. No yeah. pressure. No pressure. <laughs> we've asked him to produce his top 10 breakout stars Ooh. of Euro 2024. So we're not looking looking for you know, your Bellingham, yeah, your Bappes. We're looking for players that could announce themselves on the superstar stage. Importantly as well, you can only pick one player from each nation. So you can't have three or four England players, three or four France players. We want to see a diverse selection. Mm. Neve, we want you critiquing through it and you've got some of your own suggestions to bring to the table as well. Yeah, so 10th. We're going in reverse order, so we'll save your best picks for last. The 10th breakout star. Who are you going with? I'm going to go with Matt O'Reilly. Oh, really? I think he's a... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, Smithy <laughs> Smithy has been saving that one up <laughs> as well, man. That is... Yeah, that was great. That was really good. Um, Thanks, mate. Matt, Matt O'Reilly's got so much to him as a footballer. Yeah. He's very, very complete. And I think the big thing with him... People don't really talk enough about him, I think. He mm. plays for Celtic. He's, his Champions League performances have been really good over the years. He's dynamic. He's quick. He's fast. He's just that type of player that in central midfield that I think people will look at and go... Yeah, that was Denmark's best player this this uh, tournament. So he's going to go into tenth, I think, which is a little bit harsh, but we've got to start somewhere. Yeah, and you know, plays for Celtic, and he was born in England, but he, ha he can represent Denmark yeah. because I think his mum's Danish. He speaks and understands Danish as well. So I think it's quite exciting to see Matt O'Reilly get called up onto the international stage. Only court. one cap though at the age of 23. Major tournament. Are you, su are you surprised at that? A little bit surprised, but I think it's it's one of those things, isn't it, where nations need to go outside the box a little bit and find the yeah. you know the. Bereton Diaz story is a good one mm. with Chile, where you find those sort of pockets of talent around the world that could be a little bit different that could get there. But I do think he's he's got a lot of quality, and I think he'll show it at, your, at the Euros. Neve, agree with that? Yeah, I think I mean he's got fortunate that through injuries had the opportunity with Denmark uh, to be in the team. I think it'll be about how he handles the pressure of the running with Celtic and Rangers, and just building mm. on that consistency as a young player. And, yeah. yeah, 21 goal involvements in the Premiership this season, 11 goals and 10 assists. Right, next up. Next up, we're going with a player that I think would be more of a breakout star if he hadn't been injured this season. Uh, Arda Gula, Turkey. Okay. He's one of the players that I watched. I've never seen a player that good at his age in central midfield. Oh. When I first saw him, it was incredible. I was really, really surprised at his levels. I think the big thing with him is it's getting that game time. Obviously, with Carlo Ancelotti's Real Madrid, there's a lot of midfields in there. So he's not had, really had a chance this season, but technically an unbelievable He's a little bit in between maybe a Luka Modric and maybe a flair player. His ability to beat a man 1v1 is incredible. And that's why I think he'll be a breakout star is because we'll see the quality. When I saw him, I was, I was so surprised. So I think everyone will have that kind of that feeling, those ideas. So a talent. Big, yeah. big talent. He's, he's not unfortunate, mm. but he is like competing with, you know, at Madrid. Yeah. He's just joined this season, of course. He's had mm. consistent injury problems as well, so it's been so unlucky there. But competing with Jude Bellingham, yeah. competing with Ed Camavinga, your Modric, Valverde. Yeah. And then he can also play a bit more advanced as well, can't he? He can kind of come in off the wings. You've got a Turkish player as well, right? Yeah, there. I mean, the future the of Turkish football looks bright with <laughs> these two. So I've got uh, Kenan Yildiz at Juventus, who Juventus the last couple of years have been quite painful to watch in terms of uh, scoring goals. Uh, they've really struggled. Vlahovic has struggled more recently as well. And then in comes Yildiz, who has literally, he's transformed them. They're, he's transformed Vlahovic. Uh, they work so well together. And Okiesa suffered the ACL injury and mm. he's not really recovered too well from that. Uh, and he's come in and he's, he's been a saviour so young. I'm really excited for him. Yeah, that connection. Yes. I agree. about that? Key. Yeah, no, I think, well, right now, you'd probably put uh, Yildiz ahead of... Gula just because of the season, right? Yeah. I think injuries have been a big thing for, for Gula this season mm. and Yildiz has stepped into, again, a pretty boring Juventus team. It has looked a bit better recently, but still needs a little bit more flair about it, I think. But no, it's, it's a great suggestion. OK, let's keep going through. Next up, we're going with uh, a Scottish player that plays in Syria. Lewis Ferguson. Yeah. I think this player is going to be absolutely massive. Um, if you've watched Thiago Motta's Bologna this season, I know many people may have not, but they are an, a really, really interesting side. The system, the fluidity of how they play is, is really, really, really good. Uh, it's very relational, you know, focused on the ball, a lot of players in ball areas. It looks crazy where you'll have, like, nine players in one zone. You'll be like, 
you know, wears everyone else. But that's a big thing. He's been a real key component. Fifth most passes in, in Serie A this season. Six goals. Um, only Bonaventura um, has scored more and Cope Minus from midfield. Good quality. I think we'll, we'll start to see him really flourish and a young player that Premier League teams will start to take notice of. I was just about to ask you that about him, actually, where you think he, he could get to. Six goals, four assists, you said, in 30 appearances. Top Scottish score in Serie A history. So do you think you will have Premier League clubs off the back of this? Because you always get these players from breakthrough seasons at, at tournaments that get picked up by Premier League and bigger clubs. Where, where do you think he can get to in terms of career-wise? So I think what's really interesting is Matt O'Reilly and Ferguson, both are two players that we'll probably see at Premier League clubs because they play in central midfield. Yeah. I think the thing with what Ferguson's got maybe over a Matt O'Reilly, it's that kind of stylistic side that plays for a Bologna team that's so possession heavy that yeah. a Manchester City, a Liverpool, a Manchester United, a Tottenham, Tottenham would be a great spot for him, I think, in terms of a transition to the Premier League. But big, big talent. It's good to see players like that come through. Yeah, mm. and I think people maybe at home might not know, but Bologna have been awesome this mm. season. You mentioned it briefly there, but they are competing yeah. for Champions League spots. Yeah. This isn't like a, a player that's in a team mid, middle of Serie A. They are pushing like the Juventuses, head of AC Milan's. So this is a very, very high-level team. Mm. Neve, your thoughts on... Yeah, the interesting thing will just be how do they fit him in that midfield? Because I think mm. Scotland in midfield have all have mm. sort of sit, set up for a system as such, and so they've got a lot of players in there that are very talented. Uh, so it's how will they get him in the team? Yeah, good basically. point. Yeah, completely correct. Scott McTominay, probably one of the best goal scorers in the history of football, you'd say. <laughs> That's a joke, by the way, before that gets clipped. Um, it's already next, been clipped. Yeah, it's already gone. Yes. Um, next up, we're going to go for Charles uh, De Catalara. Yeah. Uh, you know, another player that's, that's supremely talented. This season, mm. he's averaging a goal or assist every other game. Didn't really work out on Milan for him. Yeah. Didn't really play enough. So, Only made eight yeah. starts in 33 Serie A games. Back at Atalanta, I think we've all seen the goal that he scored a few weeks ago. That yeah, yeah. ridiculous turn and, and strike from outside the box. Big, big talent. Reminds me a little bit of, of Kai Havertz in terms of prayer profile. Quite tall, quite languished, but really good off the ball. Does his damage when he's moving away from the play. So I do think he's, he's a top quality player. I'd have him a bit higher if maybe the Milan move had worked out, mm. I'd say. So that's why he's kind of a little bit deeper in the list. What, what's interesting to me about this list so far is we're talking about breakthrough stars, you expect to see really young players. Some of these, they're, they're still young, but 23, 24, obviously we know about De Ketelet. He's been around for a while. So, so what, and it hasn't worked out. Been, what, why do you think this tournament will be his tournament? Because he's someone that we have seen. Yeah, I think he can past. make an impact for Belgium, maybe off the bench. Um, you think if you look at Belgium recently, they've been a little bit hot and cold and an impact has come mm. off from an appender off the bench or maybe a, a, the Catalara. I think he'll have a great end to the season as well. I think he's just coming into form. If you look at his, his goals and assists, a lot of them have come this calendar year. So I think that's why I'd, I'd say him, you know, going to the, the competition in form, I think that's a big, big thing. Yeah. Other players on the list, it's a similar thing where you've got form going in, which means you can be classed as a break, real breakout star. Mm. And there is something to be said, isn't there, when you just smash it at an international tournament, like your position on the world football yeah. stage does just become on the map. elevated. Do you think he do you think there's the potential for him to go back to Milan? So obviously there's that loan and then I'm not sure. It's an interesting one. I actually I do agree that he's talented and I'm excited to watch him. Personally I think Adagula should be higher up this list um, by the way. But I think with Belgium in terms of how much are we going to see him? There's a lot of competition mm, yeah. going forward for Belgium. I mean, I've got a player here, yeah, he Bakayoko, who I think is actually perhaps an even better contender as a name, uh, just because maybe him playing right wing, he's more likely to get more minutes off of something. But there's so much competition. Uh, there's a new sort of era with Belgium. Uh, you've got Doku, Trossard, Lukaku. You know, there's lots of players that... Um, could potentially play and it'll be just how do they fit him in I think with mm. Milan it didn't really work because they didn't they didn't know where to play him whereas uh, Atalanta Gasparini has sort of brought him in sort of like the Illichich kind of thing yeah. uh, and he's found a way to really use him I don't know I, I couldn't I don't know if it'll work you've got Bakayoko Bakayoko, your hands yeah. there. tell us a little bit about why you think Johan has, has a chance yeah I think because I'm at Doc on the left Bakayoko on the right I just think that that it's that electric. sounds exciting, oh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. and exactly. He'll, he'll bring something totally different to right wing than what, we, what we've seen uh, with Belgium. So, yeah, he's a really exciting player. Yeah, his output this season has just been amazing. Isn't yeah, it? one amazing. of those nations, Belgium, isn't it, where you don't quite know what to expect because you mentioned some of the, some of the players. They obviously you've got like De Bruyne as well. They've got so much individual talent, but it's it's often the the, the, the system or, or how they play that they're, they're a 
difficult team to work out how they're, they're going to be. And I haven't put, seen many people put them in that France-England bracket in terms of potential winners, but I think certainly they'll be, they'll be up there. But... Yeah, Tedesco's an interesting manager where, like, the start of his tenure is, uh, in club football, mm. he usually gets a really good tune out of them first season really well, and then it kind of falls off afterwards. International management is completely different. Yeah. Yeah. I think tactically it'll be interesting, as, as you mentioned, it's, it's exciting. You're playing wingers at wing-back, so it's yeah. very attacking. Um, next cool, on the next list... Up. Uh, Xavi Simons, I yeah. think, yeah. he would be higher up. So the reason why he's sixth for this tournament, I think, is, again, I think the Netherlands under Koeman are a little bit defensive. You know, Daly Blinn's playing as a left wing back in their system versus an attacking player. So it's whether he'll get the minutes. Because he's got the quality. Most mm. carries into the final third in Europe's top five leagues. The goals, the assists... The impact, even in the Champions League, when you know you watch Leipzig, Real Madrid, he was the player that's catching the attention. He's the one that's carrying the ball, that's looking like he can make something happen. So I would put him a lot higher up, but just because I think game time could be a question mark. OK, stick okay. him up. Let's get Travis Simmons up. Um, nearly into the top five, then. Let's go into the yeah. top five. So, again, really tough. The top five is really, really hard. I think there's a lot of quality. Uh, first up, Zaire Emery. Mm. Um, from France. Is this low, Dave? Is this low? This is, this is what I was thinking. Is this Tough. low? Again, competition for minutes in that French midfield is pretty yeah. big, but uh, in terms of goal involvements in the Champions League, a goal and three assists, the most of any teenager, he really has quality. And I think if you watch any of the PSG games this season in the Champions League, you, you question what they're doing and then you look at someone like um, Zay Emery yeah. and you think, well, this guy's got it and he's still really, really young. 100%. 18 years of age. Do you think that's an important issue that Dave mentions there? We, we all know that he is... Uh, nailed on for this yeah. list, but it is the competition for it places because the French squad is so stacked, yeah. isn't it? Is, is that going to be an issue for him, do you think? It, it, perhaps, but then at the same time, you know, he's been performing at such a top level and yeah. also mm. in France as well, which could really play into yeah. his favour. Yeah. yeah, OK, fourth. Fourth, again, super, super hard, but I do think Cole Palmer, if, hey. if well. given the game time, could be massive for England. I think mm. you play your Thorn players at tournaments this season, 19 goal involvements in the Premier League. Yeah, incredible. He has been the heartbeat of Chelsea. He really has. And he's a player that I think has got better with the game time. I don't think he'd be the same player if he stayed at Manchester City. So credit to, to Cole for taking that step and moving forward. He would provide a lot of it for England in that attacking midfield role that would be different to other options. So I think given the game time, if he can get a run, I think, you know, Coming off as a sub, grabbing himself a goal and getting into that first team would be really, really important. But the talent is obviously there. So a bit like Warren Zyremi, yeah. where, well, where does Cole Palmer fit? Because if you've got, you think Drew Bellingham's going to play in that 10 role as he's played for Madrid, Phil Foden, you've got Bukayo Saka. Saka yeah. I can't disclose this because we're doing England squad after... We are. Point, so, yeah, point. Point. So, Come on, Joe. Read I, I've got lots of ideas for that, Joe. <laughs> yeah. um, you've got to stay tuned. Would Cole to be your England breakout star, Neve? I mean, what I've, it's funny, really. With breakout stars, it's the, there's a bit of a line, isn't there, between they're going to be a breakout star or they might just not play that many minutes yeah. because they're still young. The whole point is, are they going to break out? And the, the player I've got is a little bit more, I'd say, out there and rogue because there's no guarantee that he'll even be on the plane. Um, well, okay. Sorry, Brown Perhaps I'm getting ahead a little bit in its future tournaments that where he will break out, but I'm just sort of trying to get it in there. Uh, but I, he should 100% yeah. be in an England squad. Him and, and John Stones together, is, that's the future of England. You, you'd, you'd start those two. I'm keeping my cards close okay. to my chest. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots to look forward to. Good guest work, thanks. Yeah. Presenters nearly let us down <laughs> yeah. there. Uh, Dave, where are we going? Uh, again, top three, I think, <laughs> is, is probably the hardest to pick um, with the nations. Um, I don't know whether I'm going to go with this, but we're going to go with it. Lamine uh, Yamal from mm. Spain. Um, you know, youngest scorer in La Liga, youngest scorer in Spain. years of age. Youngest player to get an assist in the Champions League. He's just going to keep breaking records. When you look at him, the explosivity that he's got on the wings, again, I think is another reason why it'd be a breakout. It's because your eye is going to get drawn to him. Explosivity? Is that a word? If it is, we, we, amazing, create all the, we create all these words out here, but I think he's got that ability to go both ways, can play multiple positions in attack, and he puts the ball in the back of that, which is, is pretty incredible for a player of as you mentioned, such a young age. Yeah. If game time, mm. definitely. Surely he starts, doesn't he, Neve? Oh, yeah, 100%. I don't think... I think with certain players, age just doesn't come into it when you're clearly mm. just a cut above yeah. on, when you're on the pitch. Yeah. 39 appearances at the age of 16 for Barcelona. That, I mean, that is ridiculous. Is it in its own yeah. self? <laughs> it's absolutely it's ridiculous. Is, it a bit, is that a bit worrying? Like, we saw it with Pedro, mm. didn't we, when he produced that 70-game season? It was like knees shot to pieces straight yeah. away. I think it's Barcelona at the moment, right? That's their current constraints, as they've got to be putting yeah. people through the academy. Um, OK, your big two. So these are the main two that are going to... 
explode or explosivity, as you call yeah, it. Yeah, well, be brave. Be brave. Yeah, be brave go on. Reckon. We're going to go with Joao Neves, yeah. number two. Um, you've seen him in the Champions League this season dominate uh, for players under 21. Most tackles, most possession won, most passes into the final third. This kid is ridiculous. He is absolutely ridiculous. His ability to win the ball back and control the game. I think the big thing when you look at players that come from uh, Portugal in you know, Sporting's Academy, Benfica's mm. Academy, Porto's Academy, they have tactical awareness, which is really, really big for the modern game. João Neves is a player that can do that. You know, games this season against Salzburg, Champions League, he started off as an aggressive eight, moved back to a controlling six, played a, a brilliant pass to, for them to win the game. He's a player that has unbelievable quality, £100 million price tag, Manchester United interested, yeah. many teams interested in European football. He will, he should get the minutes. He should get the minutes, so should be that one of the breakout stars. Yeah, I think that Portugal team as well, obviously, mm. they've had such an amazing run of form recently under Roberto Martinez. Mm. Is there a problem with those minutes? Because you look at that midfield, mm. there's big names in there. Even Joao Polina in that deeper role, in the more advanced role, you've got the Brunos, you've got the Bernardos, like the competition yeah, for 21 year olds to try and get in amongst that midfield. Yeah, 100%. That'll be the thing. But what will play in his favour is the fact that he's got a lot of versatility to his yeah. game. There mm. is a, a lot of the pitch that he could be in and, and he'd be absolutely fine. So he's, he's 100% an option. Mm. OK, number one is... So your breakthrough player of the tournament, Florian Wirtz. OK. I yeah. think he's had his breakout season. Yeah. yeah. You look at Europe's top five leagues in all competitions, uh, he's got the most assists, 17, in Europe. Yeah. He is an integral part of Chabi Alonso's by Leverkusen. He's the heartbeat of their attack. Um, Julian Nagelsmann is, is talking about using Wirtz and Musiala as two tens in the system in an attacking sense. We've mm. all seen what Musiala's done this season, mm. his ability to kind of ice skate around the pitch and beat people in the dribble. Uh, Florian Wirtz will be the brains, the ideas, the creativity. And I do think he's a player that is almost underrated right now. Um, he created 10 chances in a game this season against Gladbach, which mm. is the most of any player in the Bundesliga for around seven years. Mm. He has got star quality. And yeah. if Germany go anywhere, which they very much could do, the German problem is that they've shown such bad form pre-tournament, mm. but they've changed their, their, their squad. Tony Cruz has come back in. Mm. They've changed a lot of their ideas. Mm. This is a big, big gamble in terms of Germany, but he's got the quality and I think he'll, he'll absolutely fly through. Neve, your thoughts overall on the list? Any that you'd change? No, I think, yeah, I think Adagulu potentially I would put a little bit higher up because he will be a standout player for Turkey. But Florian Wirtz, yeah, that's a really, really good shout because, you know, Germany have lacked that number nine, that mm. killer for a while, so they need to get their goals elsewhere. So having Musiala and Wirtz, it, that could be a problem. And you have one more suggestion, did you? Yeah, you Matteo Retegui. Um, I love this suggestion, this is brilliant. Yeah, a little bit, I mean, I had to get an Italian representative in there at some point. Um, but Italy, I mean, another side like Germany where there's a, been a real struggle to get goals. The fact that Skamaka hasn't yeah. been called up, Lorenzo yeah. Luke has been given an opportunity. It, I mean, Matteo Retegui is born in Argentina, but Mancini made sure that he played for, for Italy as an option because we just need somebody, mm. you know, somebody uh, to score goals. And straight away, he scored against England. And he's shown that you know, he can do it. Yeah. Uh, he's played really well for Genoa as well. He's mm. someone to look out for. OK, like that. Well, there is confirmation of Statman Dave's breakthrough 10 players for Euro 2024, with some assistance from Neve as, well. as well. Like that, one, one from each nation. nation. Yeah, let us know what you think about that at home.